shame anybody. You know, okay. We're having testimony service. <laughs> you who got a testimony? I got one. And so you come rolling up here, talking about, well, you know, I needed to do so and so, but my son, he just wouldn't, he don't ever want to get himself together on time. So that made me late, and then I missed my appointment. But I thank God anyway. What? <laughs> Sit down, sir. Sit down, ma'am. You're not giving glory to God. That's not for your good. If you're shaming somebody, my husband don't never buy me no press. <laughs> my wife don't cook nothing. And we're sitting here tearing down the very thing that God is trying to build up. But if we would begin to use our words to build and to plant so that when we come to the harvest season, All right now. that we can harvest and reap all the benefits, yeah, all the right. good things, all the blessings of the Lord. Yeah. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yeah. Some of us use our testimony to tame people. Mm -hmm. When my kids were little, they would say, you know, they say there's any testimony, my kids would put their hand up, and I'd be looking at them waving. What's your testimony? <laughs> <laughs> you got to know. Right. Because kids will embarrass you. <laughs> and look, they don't mean nothing by it, just as innocent as they want to be. But they'll sit up there and say, well, you know, mama had to go pee so bad. <laughs> she was dancing. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, we had to get them out. But God is good. And you're like... <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Anytime your babies say they got a testimony, I tell them, tell it to me first. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. <laughs> Mama burnt up the turkey and we had to go to the store and buy us another turkey. <laughs> Amen? But we love the Lord. <laughs> testimony to tame anyone. Some people are scared when some person gets up to testify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh Lord. <laughs> I'm going to do better next time. Just don't let her say nothing. I'm going to clean my room. Just don't let her say nothing about it up there, God. Because he's trying to tame you. And that's not the purpose of the testimony. Amen. Bless his name. Testify. It means to make a statement based on personal knowledge or belief, to bear witness, to serve as evidence or proof, to express personal conviction, to make a solemn declaration under oath for the purpose of establishing a fact as in court. When we testify in the courthouse, we put our hand on the Bible, don't we? And we say, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. Look, we ought to be telling the truth, regardless of if there's a Bible in front of us or not. Amen. If you say that you belong to God, then lies are of the devil, and then that's the wrong daddy. So that's number one. Make sure when you testify, you ain't test the lie. All right. Make sure when you prophesy, you're not prophesying. All right. Amen. There are just some things that ought not to happen in the house of God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, help us. Yes, today, yes. The Bible says this. Lord, we are late. Oh, well. Psalms 18. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress yes. and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Doesn't that make you feel better already? Yes. Amen. When certain people stand up to testify something about the words that come from their mouth, cause you look, you, you, your backbone starts straightening up, and you're like, yeah, that's right. Amen. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. 
The sorrows of death come past me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell come past me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord yeah. and cried out to my God. What did he do? He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even into his ears. Woo, glory. The focus when we testify should always be on the Lord and his faithfulness. Who is God to me? Who is God to me? Here David speaks and he says that God is my rock, my shield, my fortress, my deliverer. In him will I trust. When we testify, what we need to learn to do is to magnify God and minimize our issues. Amen. Thank you, Lord. What happened? <laughs> after we give God the praise, after the, the matter, mm -hmm. amen, of David, the king, the man after God's own heart, amen, we can learn some things if we would study some of the people. That's a biographical study, that's amen, right. for those of you that were in our class for interpreting scriptures, amen, biographical studies means that we study the person's life. And we learn things from them. And some things we learn from some old life we don't need to know. Amen. <laughs> we take the good example and leave the bad. My husband would say, uh, you either be, you're either being a good example or a horrible warning. <laughs> don't come to the podium becoming a horrible warning. Okay? Speak what God has done about his faithfulness. Tell who God is to you. Tell what happened. Was it a difficult time? Was it a sickness? Amen. Was it something that happened in your finances and God came through? Tell what happened. Look, and you know, financial, emotional, my mind was just messed up. Whatever it is. But don't take all day to tell it. Amen. Amen. That's right. Then you got to say how you felt during the time that this was going on. I felt like I wanted to die. Did you hear, David? I was going to go down to the pit. I thought death was going to encompass me round about. Amen? Amen? He said what he felt like. I thought I was going to die. I felt like I was drowning. There was pressure on every side. I didn't know if I was coming or if I was going. But then we get down to my faith was built up. Because the Lord heard my cry, and he pitied my every groan. He came to my rescue just when I thought I was going down for the count. Here comes God, and he grabs a hold to me, and he says that I am with you, my daughter. If you don't know how to go, I will carry you. All right, now. Thank you, Lord. We've got to harvest the right words that we can have what God says that we can have. Thank you, Lord. What did I learn about the nature of God? And how can I encourage someone else during their time? Mm -hmm. Yes, I remember when my mother passed. Mm -hmm. And I thank God my mama is still here. But somebody, amen, right. Sister Laferne can come to me and say, Pastor Michelle, I understand. I went through that. And I know that God is going to take you through because he took me through that. I know sister's going to say, look, I know I had a hard time trying to crank that car up. But you know what? God, at some point, when the appointed time came, he blessed me with another vehicle. And baby, I just go room and it just jumped on and we taking it off. Bless his holy name. I remember the time. Look, bro. I used to live in my car, All right. and I would go to the, the YMCA and hit the hot spots. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you don't have a bathroom in your car, yeah. right. okay. you go somewhere and you hit the hot spots, and then you still go to school, and you still go to work, you still take your children to the daycare, you still do what is necessary and required to live. You just have an address. <laughs> There might be a fourth pinto. <laughs> but you do what you have to do. Because somebody will tell you. Because now y'all see where I live now. Over here on 711 Ponderosa Drive. Amen. I don't live in my car anymore. All and right. You know, if you live in yours right now, God can do it because he is not a respecter of person. The same thing that he did for me, he'll do that same. 
same thing for you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. We can testify to the goodness and the awesomeness of God. We can say, God, I'm living up underneath your tent. And because I live under your tent, I know that you're going to take care of me. Bless his holy name. Come on, let's stand together. Father, we bless you today. This poor man cried. And the Lord delivered him out of every one of his trials. Every one of his trials. And look. Every, every all means without exception. And without exception, we serve a God that will take us and make us and mold us and put us into the place where he'd have for us to be. I don't know what your condition is today. I don't know what you're going through today. But I want to encourage you today. Say, harvest your words correctly. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life. We serve a God. He said, <laughs> I lay before you life and death. And then he says, choose you this day who you will serve. Yeah. Amen. And look, then he makes it idiot proof. Because you know when we weren't saved, we didn't have a clue that we needed the Lord. All right. And he says, choose death our life. So what did he do? He, he made an idiot proof. He said, choose life. Amen. Choose life. Every eye is closed. You're in this house today. And the Lord is saying that you need to choose life. You haven't given your heart to Jesus. And you're in this house today. I want to introduce you to a mighty God. A God that will love you above all other things in your life. One that will take care of you. If you're in the house today, let me see your hand. Thank you, Father. God bless you. God bless that hand and that hand. Father, we thank you today for your presence. Thank you, oh God, that you cause us to prosper in everything. Thank you, Lord. You're in this house today, and you've been speaking negative words. You've been speaking words that cause death and not life. And you want to change the way that you talk today. Let me see your hands in this house. God bless that hand. Thank you, Father. Come on, let's come around the altar. There is nothing between. Father, we bless your holy name. God, we thank you today. Thank you for the hands that have been raised in this house. God, I appreciate what you're doing in your people. God, that you are teaching us that without a shadow of a doubt, that you are God and you are God for love. Father, we thank you that you're showing us your glory. Thank you, Father. Your Shekinah glory that fills the place, oh God. Fill your people. Father, we sang, there is nothing set a fire, set a fire, God, 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 set a fire, set a fire, God, set a fire, set a fire, God, set a fire, Lord. Set a fire in our lives, oh God. Set a fire in our tongues, oh God. Help us, Lord, to bring every thought into captivity to the Lord to forgive Set a fire, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We bless you, oh God. Father, I'm asking you to as my brother has had his hand up, oh God. As for the other young person that had their hand up, God. I ask you, Father, Lord, that you would save them, Father God. That you would give them, Lord God, your spirit. God, that they would know without a shadow of a doubt that they belong to you in the name of Jesus. And you ask the Lord in your heart. My soul is Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You can take in your life. And you're going to do all that he has for you in the name of Jesus. And I heard an affirmation of that. Thank you, Lord. God, we bless you today. Thank you, God, for causing our lips to be changed. Father, that you take what you thought and you put it in the captivity of the Lordship of your son. Help us to speak positive things. Help us to speak life. Help us, oh God, to speak good 
Yes, I. 